Hi guys, Vinny here. So um, we are now getting into the second part of the course where we link what we've been doing up to now and what we've been doing up to now is really working with the response function, function of the uh, microbe. But we're now going to be linking it to generating concentration profiles in the fermenter. And uh, to be able to do this, we're going to heavily rely on the magic of Python. Okay, so initially there'll be a lot of copying and pasting um, my code, nothing wrong with that. But um, the idea would be to really understand what the code does. Okay, the more you understand as to what the code do, the better. You might be able to get answers by just copying and pasting my code. But uh, try and gradually build your understanding as to what is happening by working with Python. So I'm going to try and explain the functions that I use in my chapter 5 examples to, to give you a bit of an overview of what the Python actually does. So let's get on with it. So when looking at the um, Python code, there's basically three important functions um, that we work with. The first one is called ODEint, and that's really our integration function. More about that later. Then there's a second one which I refer to as the fermenter equation. And lastly, we have the response function. Okay. So these three functions link to one another. And it's important to understand how they communicate with one another. So first looking at the ODE int, at the ODE int function, and just to give you an idea, I will work of it later, but that's roughly where you see the ODE int function. You can see in my code it's called up there. It calls upon the fermentation equation and more about what it does right now. So the ODE int function effectively um, takes, takes one from one concentration, and this concentration will be the concentration in the fermenter, to a next concentration. Okay, so it's not good. It takes one from one concentration to a next concentration. And to do that, one needs those vectors. You've seen, we talk a little bit about differential equations and how to solve them. You need a vector field, and this is not in a two-dimensional space. This will be in a hyper-dimensional space because sometimes we're going to have four or five differential equations. But really, it's all about going from one point to another point in the space. One concentration to another concentration. And to do that, you need a slope or a vector. Okay, so what do ODE and do? Well, basically what ODE and do is it communicates with the fermentation equation. So it passes over the current concentration it has. It also passes over the time that it has. And then the fermentation equation can do the integration. Now the fermentation equation, you know for a batch reactor system, it reduces to a fairly simple equation. It's just this specific equation that you have in your notes. So once the C is received, okay, the C is received from ODE int, the time is also received, we're not really going to use it. Basically, what the fermentation equation does is to calculate the slope and return the slope or the vector. So dc dt is really the thing that is returned. Okay, But you will see that the rate of production is in the equation that determines the slope. So for the firm equation to be able to calculate the slope which is over here, we need to call upon the response function. Okay, now the response function, so basically what you do is you once again pass over the concentration, the current concentration in the fermenter, because remember ODE int, ODE int the big function, starts from a concentration and wants to generate a next concentration so that you can draw that profile. Okay. So back to the respiration function. What happens in the respiration function is really exactly what we've been doing in chapter four. So you've got your stoichiometric matrix, you've got your different rates, some internal, some external, and that will be equal to 
your constant matrix which contains a mu and which, con which contains a theta. Now very important, and this is very important, this mu and theta is soon, not exactly in the example that we do in chapter 5, maybe towards the end, but it is a function of C and theta is also a function of C. Okay, so this is crucial. This is crucial because what happens is you need to get past the concentration from the fermentation equation to be able to return and what you return is really just the rates. Okay, so, so the response function, what we've been doing in stoichiometry all along is just to calculate the rates and we can now return these rates to the fermentation equation. Okay, the first example that I give you in chapter 5 basically has a constant coefficient here. So you keep on retain, returning the same thing to the fermentation equation. I just keep it simple for starters. But later on, we will use the concentration variation. You'll see at the end of, um, of the chapter 5 example, there is some link to the concentration of the glucose. So basically, what we're saying is what gets returned from the response function will vary depending on what is fed in terms of the current concentration in the fermenter. Okay, so there's a, there's a real cycle going on here. And uh, you need to understand what gets passed and what gets returned. And you need to understand that as time progress, this thing happens over and over and over again. And, you know, it, it really, well, it doesn't take a long time for the computer, but it's a big calculation. And what it returns then is different concentration values at different time values. So just to quickly run through the different functions. Let me just see if I... Oh, hold on. Okay, so now I just want to show you the functions as they look in Python. So, so let's make this one a bit smaller. And we bring in the first one, which will be the ODE function. So there we have it. Let's just make it a bit larger. So um, important to see in this function. Let me just get my blue pen out so that I can. Okay. So, so what you have here, there we have the ODE function. And it's going to generate the concentration array, which is really the whole span of concentrations that we generate. Remember, this concentration is not a single concentration, but it is a vector of concentrations. In the first example, there was actually four concentrations. Okay, so what you immediately can see is that it calls upon the fermentation equation. It starts with the initial value that needs to be specified. That's the initial concentration of four separate concentrations. And you also define the time values where you want concentrations to be reported. Okay, so this one-liner is really where it all gets initiated. Because from here, you now call upon the fermentation equation. The fermentation equation will return a slope value. From a slope value, you can get a new concentration, and then the cycle will continue. Okay, so this is what the ODE function looks like. So I'm just going to take that one away, and then um, we'll bring in the fermentation equation. Okay, so the fermentation equation is really just the C-mole balance. Um, for, a, for a batch system in this specific case. Very important, if we have a look, you will see that the concentration, you see that little C over there and that little T over there, that got, that got passed from the ODE function. So I'm referring to this, this is what's happening over here. Okay, then very importantly, what happens in this little line over here, I'm just going to I'm just going to show it there to you. What happens in this little line is that we define the order of the components that we're going to integrate. Very careful not to confuse this order of components that we have over here with the order of components from our matrix. That doesn't have to be the same thing at all. This is just the components that we are interested in integrating. Okay, and then we get to the link part. Here we call upon the response function. Can you see over there? Maybe maybe I should really use a color pen. So so you can see here that I am, and I'm just going to get me a lighter color, so I am calling upon the response function in that specific line. 
So basically this implies that I'm passing on my C to the response function. Okay. And the other thing that happens, and I've got to use another color for this, is that I return, once I have the rates, and you can see here that I the rates have now been passed. These rates have been passed from the response function. If I just multiply the rates of the concentration, I get the slopes. So effectively, what is happening is that this, I'm passing back the slopes, and this yellow, it's an ugly color, that I'm doing over here is passing back the slopes to ODE int. Okay, so a lot of things happening in this fermentation equation. It gets the rates, so this little pink line, from the response function. There's the rate that's returned. So, so really this pink line is saying I'm passing the C and I'm returning the R. That's what's happening in this one line. It's a big job. Okay, and then once I have that, I can calculate slopes. Slopes is what I have over here. And slopes will be returned to ODE int, which is then used to generate the next concentration value. So there you have it. So now I can... Ugh. Okay, so I've taken that away. And lastly, we can have a look at the response function. Now this function will look like something that you have seen before. You can see here that um, we've basically initiated the whole process by passing the C. The C got passed to the response function. Okay, now very important in this first example, you don't see a concentration functionality in the function. But very soon, you will find over here that mu and theta becomes functions of the concentration. Okay, so, and that's really the link where the stoichiometry now changes. You've seen in your examples when you change the value of phi and meter, uh, theta and mu, the, the, the actual rates that you calculate change. As for the rest, the rest that we have over here, well, that is really chapter 4. Um, that is now just built into a function. Very importantly... Let's get another color here. If we have a look at what we return, this is the return. Okay, so um, so what we have over here is is really just the rates that we send back to the fermentation equation. That's what's happening in the pink over here. If you have a look at the numbers over here, you can see a one zero three four. So the order of um, numbers here is only linked to the choice of components that I have made in my fermentation equation. So, so really, this is just to say what components that I'm going to be working with, where do I fetch them out of the matrix, because remember there's some internal rates, you won't be using them, but you just need to get the corresponding rate values of the components that you want to work with and send them back to the fermentation equation. Okay, very important to realize that. So we are receiving the C over here. I need another pen for that. We are receiving the C over here. We do the normal calculation and then we are returning the rate values back to the fermentation equation. And once we have all of this, the whole thing can now operate in unity. You should understand that uh, these cycles that I have over here will keep on happening the whole time. It's actually millions and millions of times this is happening. And you wait a few seconds and you get your answer in Python. Okay, a lot of calculations happening. You guys just copy and paste a few lines and get answers. Um, I wish I can show you really how much work the computer is doing. So you know, just appreciate this massive and fast tool that you have on your computer. That's about it. Um, I'll just save this one. Remember this picture. Really, people, the, the idea is to um, try and understand what the code is doing. Sometimes you need to have the code exactly written with exactly the right format for the computer to understand it. And that that's, sometimes takes a lot of time and, and, and issues to sort out. But keep in mind what is happening and what Python is actually doing for us. Okay, I hope you have some success in your tutorials. Goodbye.